Praise the Lord, everybody. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. All right, we're getting fancy today, all right? It's good to see you. Good to see you. Praise God. Um, thank God for being here. How many are ready for a word from God? I feel like God has something to speak to our hearts and to our minds. And, you know, it doesn't matter who's standing up here as long as they're proclaiming the word of God. Amen. It could be a five-year-old. They could have a word in their mouth just for you. You better be open to whatever God has to do. So let's just start with prayer and then we'll hop right in. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you recognition. We give you adoration for there's nobody else like you. God, bless our time today. Lord, will you open our hearts and our minds and uh, give us what we need? God, shift our minds, our paradigms. Let us see you even better. Let us magnify you in our lives. God, we just thank you that your word will always accomplish what it goes out to accomplish. It never returns void. So we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank God. Can y'all hear me okay? All right, all right, all right. Today we are talking a little bit. Um, our topic today is called Behind the Scenes, okay? Behind the, do I have any theatrical people? Has anybody, okay, anybody been in theater? You took drama, I see you, Nyla. Anybody took drama? And no one, oh, the, the, I see you, I see you, okay. Um, how many have attended a theater, uh, a the, theatrical production, been to a play, a concert, me? Okay, now, how many people, you didn't quite make the acting list, but you were a stagehand. You worked in the back, yes. You were, uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you ever go to a play, it's beautiful on the stage, but it's a lot going on in the back. Have you ever, if those who were actors, have you ever seen, it's a whole lot of people running around, can't find their stuff, they can't put on, they just, they like the chickens with the head cut off. The backstage looks crazy. Front of stage looks amazing, right? You ever been to a really fancy restaurant and it looks, the ambiance is nice, maybe you went with your boo. But have you ever like walked by the kitchen? It's a lot happening in the kitchen. Chefs is yelling at people. It's a whole lot, you know, they rushing. And there's a lot going on behind the scenes. So last week, Pastor Mike talked about the potter. Were you there? Did you hear that one? If you didn't hear it, go back and listen to it. It was amazing. The potter, talking about who's forming you, right? And how are we letting God form our lives? Y'all remember that? It was powerful. So today... Um, from our lectionary passage, I just want to uh, add on to that and piggyback on that. Um, this week, I want to talk about what happens when we become the potters of our own lives. What happens? What happens when we come to our conclusions? What happens when God is actually working behind the scenes of our lives? Amen, amen. And you know, this is where I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm like, I don't have a microphone. It feels weird. So bear with me. All right. So um, just to let you catch you up to where we are, we're starting at Exodus 32. Now look, to pull out your Bibles, pull out your, your, your phone Bibles. I don't want you to just get used to just looking at the screen because we could put anything up there. How you know? I want you to look at it for yourself. It's time to get back to note-taking. Remember old school note-taking? Come on, pull out them iPhone notes. I know no one has journals anymore. It's like not. Okay, you might may bring your Bible journals or whatever. We're going to Exodus 32. Why don't you turn to it for yourself? Exodus 32, and I'm going to catch you up a little bit of where we are in this story. The children of Israel had just escaped Egypt in a really dramatic fashion. Y'all remember, it was a whole thing. Red Sea, oh, it was a whole thing. We, we just escaped slavery. They happy, they juice, they doing all the things. And then they're on route to the promised land. They're, they're on their way. Everybody, you ever been on your way to a trip, on your way to a vacation? You in the airport like, we on our way. You know, that, you know that feeling? They're on their way. And then God has to make a pit stop. I won't even say a piss out. It was a hard pause. So this is where we're starting at. I'm at ver um, Exodus 32, starting at verse 1. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. 
So Aaron said to them, all right, bet. Take off your rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that was in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hands and fashioned it with a graving tool and made, what did he make? Yes, a golden calf or a molded calf. And they said, look what they said. These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt, the nerve. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings. I'm trying to find this thing. And burnt offerings and peace offerings. And check this out. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. My goodness. All right. May God bless God's holy word. Um, this story took a hard left. What happened? I just told you we just left the, the Egypt. We, we happy. We on our way to the promised land. This, this, we made a hard left. What in the world happened? I'm looking at verse 1. I want you to look at verse 1. The story is already problematic in verse 1. When the people saw that Moses delayed coming from the mountain, when they were delayed, when the people saw Moses was delayed, have you ever been on your way somewhere? Have you ever felt like you were on your way? Have you ever felt like I got the certificate, I got the degree, I got the thing, I got my resume, I'm on my way. And everything halts. Everything stops. Everything is like, no, it's a no. Have you ever felt like that? This is where they are. 40 days and 40 nights, Moses left. He went up the mountain. Now, Moses just wasn't on vacation. He didn't say, I needed a break from y'all. He was actually doing a good work. He was on the mountain receiving commandments from God. These commandments were the Ten Commandments and all the rules about how you're going to live. He was setting them up for success. I'm getting the playbook from God. If you will, I'm getting everything you need to live right. Everything you need that's going to set you up. If you just get the blueprint, like every architect needs a blueprint. I'm giving y'all the, blue, the, blue, the blueprint and he was delayed. Now, 40 days and 40 nights, you'll always see this pattern in the Bible. It always means times of judgment, times of testing. 40 days and 40 nights. Always, It's like a pro, probation period. Anybody still on a probation period on their job? You know how that feel. You can't wait to get them benefits. You're just waiting, all right? So this, this situation took a hard left, and it shows us what happens when we start forming our own lives, when we start making our own opinions, when we feel like God is taking too long and I'm going to need to get to moving. Right. So let's see. There's a couple of things that happen um, when, when we form our own decisions, when we when we make our own, when we fashion our own opinions. The first thing that happened with them is that they created a build a God syndrome. Build a God. Anybody been to build a bear before? You ever been like you could make whatever you want to. You can have you can, you can have a little hat. You can have a little what, shoes or whatever. This is what the children of Israel did. They endeavored to build their own God. Verse 1, it says, you know, up, uh, let's make a God that will go before us. Are you kidding me? A God that will go before them? They needed something tangible. You got to always ask yourself when you signed up for this Christian life, will an invisible God really be enough for you? People struggle with that. Just think about the whole concept of this. We are serving a God that we cannot see. I know a lot of people have epiphanies like they seem to know. We, God lives in an invisible realm. We are in a physical realm. Will serving an invisible God be enough for you? Because faith is literally the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of what? Like God's not doing a bait and switch on you. You clearly signed up for this life. God never promised, like, on then Al, you'll see me in the full. No, no, no. When you walk down that aisle, you signed up for an invisible God in an invisible kingdom. 
But you got to ask yourself, do I always need to see it? Do I always need to have this tangible thing? Because the image of this calf was meant to represent the Lord. First, you know, they could, we need, to, we need a representation of the God who brought us out of Israel. Like, we need to see it. We need to touch it. We need to hold it. Just give us something. Because this invisible God thing wasn't working. So they wanted to build their own God. Be careful, saints, of building your own God, of making God fit into what you want. To make God, so the pastor Mike said something so good, like if God's always agreeing with you, <laughs> that might be a problem there, right? Because God, sometimes you need to hear a good no sometimes, amen? So they wanted to build their own God. So this, this begs the question, how is your faith when it's unsupervised? See, because Moses went up the mountain. And because he was gone for so long, they was left unsupervised. They were like, you know what? Ain't nobody watching us. We can make our own decisions, do what we want. This is the question of the whole pandemic. How is your faith when it's unsupervised? When nobody's seeing you, nobody checking in on you, nobody know where, what you're doing, where you're going. We can't look in your eyes like we used to when you first came into the church. Be like, you all right, sis? Bro, you good? How is your faith when it is unsupervised? Because this is what happens. Without visible leadership, they went astray. So we're talking about forming our own lives. What happened to them? The, the second thing is that forming your own life will always make you go back to the familiar. Whenever you try to form your own life, you're going to do a U-turn right back to the thing you thought you didn't want. It says in verse 4, he received the gold from their hands and he made a, a golden calf. Aaron's choice to create the image of a calf is significant because the Egyptians and the Canaanites and the natives of that inhabited land um, where they were at were known for making their deities shaped as calves, as bulls. And it was a symbol in the ancient world. It was called, uh, the symbol was the god Apis. It was this Egyptian fertility bull god. They went back to the familiar. Strong bull, it was the common name that they would use for, cre for to the one who created everything. Or if you were someone in leadership, they would call you a strong bull. It means that you are a king or you were like a god. And a young bull was the symbol of power. And what it sounds like to me is all a bunch of, I ain't going to say it all the way because I don't want to get fired. It was all a bunch of, bull. That's what it was. So let me, real quick, uh, Bible quiz. Y'all remember the 10 plagues in Egypt? Do y'all remember one of them that dealt with a bull? What was it? Y'all, I'm not putting y'all on the spot, huh? Mm-hmm. I knew Mama Loretta was going to come through. Come on, Mama Loretta. I love when she in the house. Yes, one of the plagues was that all their livestock would, would die, right? So God already proved to you that he's greater than your God. Your God can die at any moment. So y'all going to go and build a calf of that God that already died. You saw it. You seen it die. But, but then, you know, as we laugh at them, we look at them and be like, what were they doing? But we do the same thing. What is your golden calf? Come on, what did you, what are we making? Is it a relationship? What's that thing you're going back to because it's familiar? They came out of Egypt. They saw this calf all the time. They finally got free. First thing they want to do, like, we need a calf. You know what we need? We need to make a calf. That's why we ain't got no good luck right now, because we need some calf. What is your golden calf? Is it a relationship? Are your friends tired of you telling the story about how you broke up and then you just ended up right with them again? They don't even want to hear it no more. they like, girls, save it. Like, OK. Wait, is it a person? Is it a hustle or a scam? Y'all OK? Is it that? Is that thing that, like, I just need to make a couple quick dollars, you feel me? 
And you got away with it, but you want to keep going? You know that the jail is full of the folks that kept going. All right. All right. I'm going to let that go. All right. Y'all, y'all okay? Put on your seatbelt. Is it that go-to pleasure that you swear you're going to leave alone, but it keep calling you back? What about negative down? I'm going to stay. I ain't going to stay there too long. You see, I'm going to hop right on back over to something else. What about negative thinking that you keep going back to? That thing that you left, you got free from. They went back to the familiar. This is what happens when we want to form our own lives, when we don't want to take time to see what God is doing in behind the scenes. This is, what the, this is what we all do, not just the children of Israel, but us. This is, the, uh, this is another interesting point. Forming your own life, I hope y'all taking notes. Okay, I ain't gonna put y'all on the spot. Forming your own life will have you squandering your resources. Anybody who just blew a whole lot of money on some dumb stuff? You can't even, you can't even account for it. I, like, I don't know what happened. I just went to Vegas and I don't got no more money. Forming idols will make you squander. Check it out. This is so deep. They said, Aaron said, okay, y'all want an uh, idol, y'all? Okay, take off your earrings. Now, do you got to You gotta know this. They all were giving like, okay, bed, you, what we doing, right? This same gold was a miracle. The blessings, the, the scripture said that they plunder Egypt on the way out. When, when God told them to get on out of here, like you, we about to leave, he said, hey, go tell all, ask all the Egyptians for like a pardon gift. Ask them to give you. The Egyptians wanted them gone so bad after them, their, 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 their babies died. They were like, what? Here, take it. We don't even care. They gave them so much gold that they plundered Egypt. They, they left with pockets full of gold. And they was, you know, they looked like they were stunting because they all had them in their ears, right? <laughs> they was like, we want a, we want a God. He, Moses, uh, Aaron was like, take off your earrings, take off your earrings. They had so much gold that they could make an a, a idol out of it. Wasted it on foolishness. And, it, and just to let you know how much gold they had, they still had enough gold to make all the items for the tabernacle after this foolish incident. They left with, they had so much, right? But just like us, we can waste our resources on foolishness. Stop giving your blessings to the wrong people. Stop giving it to the wrong people. Even, though, even in the New Testament, Jesus says, stop giving your pearls to swine. Like at some point, you got to realize that we can't just keep giving and giving to things that aren't benefiting us back, right? Yeah. Or to foolishness, things that's going to make you. Y'all should read this whole uh, chapter 32. God got real gangster with this goal that they, if you read, the, if you read this verse, if you read this chapter, I'm going I'm to leave it as a surprise. You're going to have to go and see what God did with this said goal, how they had to eat their words. I'm going to leave it at that. They wasted their blessing on foolishness. Another thing, what happens when we form our own lives, when we do it, we have a lot of false narratives. We live with a lot of false narratives when we form our own lives. Look at verse 4. It says, um, after they made the, the golden calf, it says, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. <laughs> They gave the familiar credit. So where was this little calf in 400 years of slavery? I just have questions. These were the guys that brought you out of Egypt. Where was they for 400 years? Why were y'all in, in, in bondage for so long? Now that you're free, you want to give credit to the thing that was familiar before? Come on now, this it doesn't mean, let's review. These are the gods, are y'all serious? Okay, let's do a quick review. The 10 plagues, the Red Sea, fire by night, pillar by day, water um, made sweet, bread from heaven, water from a rock. These are the, and then they said, well, they, these are the ones that brought us out, not all that we've just seen. How many people have seen God move in your life undeniably? 
Nobody can't tell you nothing. He made a way out of no way, paid a bill, healed a body. You know it's God. Now, how do we look when we see the goodness of God and then we go back and give other things the credit? Well, you know, it was my, my ingenuity that got me. You know, it was, it was about that hustle life, you know. Team no sleep. That's how, that's how, I, how did you make it happen? You know, it's just a little, you know, brains. You know, I've always been smart. My grind, my talent. But when we were in a dire situation, none of these things could get us out. None of them could help. But when we get out of it, we're like, you know, I think it was kind of me. I did do a little bit of that. That was my idea on that one. Right? We create these false narratives when we form our own lives. And we can begin to form these thoughts like, it wasn't really God. Was it God? Because this is the stuff I could do, too, on my own, right? So the biggest takeaway, I'm not going to keep you long. The biggest takeaway that you can get from our time together is that God is always working behind the scenes. Come on, God is always working. You got to believe it. You got to know it. You got to trust it. Come on, say God is always working behind the scenes. God is always doing it. Always. So it is ironic that the people desire to have a symbol of God's presence when if they had just waited, if they had just waited, I wish we could see the dichotomy of, of Moses coming down. He was on his way down from the mountain when he heard all this sound of, of partying. And he was like, what's going on here? He had two stone tablets in his hand written by the finger of God of all the commandments that they'll need for their success. If they had just waited, Moses was coming down from the mountains with a plan for the tabernacle, a plan for how to live, a plan of how to treat each other. And these things would house the symbol and the presence of God. Those 40 days, God was giving them the instruction manual for their lives. If they would have just waited. Come on, God is always, think about your life. Think about the times when God seems the most quiet. Think about the times when you were saying, God, where are you? I want you to know that in those times, God is working the most. God is always working behind the scenes. God is always moving on your behalf. God always has your best interests in heart. But you have to make up in your mind when I can't see God's hand that I will trust God's heart. You got to make up in your mind. And when I can't see it, I'm going to walk this thing. But I don't always have to hold it. It don't have to be tangible. When I don't see it, I got to trust God's heart. Yes. So the question is, what is your posture while waiting? Yes. Yes. How will you wait? Yes. How will you wait? How many things? Uh, you got some things you're waiting for God for. Yes. You're believing God for some things. You're looking around like God, you know. <laughs> I mean, like, when is, when are we, when we going to get to it? Like, I was on my way. Why did it stop? The business plan was ready. What are, what's the, what are we waiting for? You know, I'm all got my finances ready so I can have my boo so we could get, you know, a life together. What's the hold up? When God, what is your posture? What is your posture? What is your posture? Now, I'm going to close in this, but I got to, I got to show you the comedy of this moment. Y'all got to please, if, go to um, Exodus 32. Please turn to verse 22. For when Moses came down from the mountains, Mike, you don't have this, but when Moses came down from the mountain, Moses was hot. He was like, Aaron, I thought I left you in charge. What's happening here? He, he approached Aaron and was like, bro, what, what is this? Check out Aaron's response. Y'all got to see this. It's in verse 22. Aaron said, let not the anger of my Lord burn hot. You know, Moses must have been on 10. You know, you know the people they are set to evil. You know these people, how they be acting. 
For they said to me, make us God who will go before us, true. And as for this Moses man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what happened to him. We don't know what became of him. Look what he said. So I said to them, let any who have gold take it off. So they gave it to me. I threw it in the fire and this came out. <laughs> For real, Aaron? That's what we doing? That's, what, that's the story you gonna go with? You just threw it in the fire and bam, it was a, it was a calf. I don't know how it happened. You know these people be tripping. Well, I don't know. They made me do it. This is hilarious to me. But at the same time, it shows us what happens when you start forming your own life. It starts making you make crazy excuses. How many of you ever had a crazy excuse for something that it was clearly your fault? Like, I don't even know. what I just went to the house and I don't even. I just went to the party. I don't even want to have it. I just did a little something. I don't, I don't know how, how they got pregnant. I don't know. No idea. I just came over to watch TV. This is a, when you form your own life, you start making crazy excuses. But this shows me <laughs> that it's time for us to get honest with God. Come on, sometimes you just got to take it on the chin and be like, hey, it was me. That was me. And you know, sometimes that's the hardest people to be around, the ones who can't admit that they're wrong. If that's been you, it's okay, it's been me. Like, I always got an excuse. Like, sometimes our excuses run out. And it's time for us to be like, you know what, God, it was me. I did it. I formed my own way, and now I'm, I'm paying the consequences. I ain't going to blame it on nobody else. I had a, yeah, okay, my upbringing, these situations, all that could be true. But at the end of the day, it was me. God wants us to be honest about what we, where we are currently, and now that's how we can move forward. Now we could go forward. We could do more things. We could do greater things when we admit, God, I have formed my own life. I have made decisions apart from you because I, I wasn't patient enough. I didn't, I didn't trust that you, were, you had my best interests in mind, so I just made a move, right? So in closing, my question to you is, Who's forming you? And what are you forming in your seasons of delay? What are you forming? What are you forming right now? What are you forming while you're waiting? What mindsets are you forming? What are you telling yourself? What are you telling yourself about God? Are you like, see, God always do. I try to do the church thing, but see... No, what are you telling yourself? Are you telling yourself, no, God is good. God is faithful. I can't see it, but I'm just going to wait on God. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to stay where I'm supposed to be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going the course. What are you saying? What are you forming? How are you treating people while you're waiting? We don't want to make the mistakes that they did and make our own lives and form all these crazy excuses and consequences. This is it's a cautionary tale. It's a cautionary tale, and it's all about the dangers of idols. And I know this is a foreign, this is a foreign word to us, because we like, we ain't got no idols. Like, I don't got no statue. I don't got a little booba in my house where I give fruit to. Like, we don't, we, we usually don't identify with that. But there are idols in our lives that we form and we set up because an idol is anything we put before God in our hearts. It's anything. Anything could be an idol, any person, any thought, anything, anything you put before God, anything that you put a higher priority to, you fill in the blank. I, I'm not going to walk down, because down, y'all got real quiet last time. So whatever we put before God, anything that we make in our hearts, our minds, more priority. And this is what we've been talking about. If you've been with us on Tuesdays, we've been walking through the book of Colossians. This last verse, I think, um, is Colossians 1.18. I'm reading this from the Amplified verse. This verse took me out. I've been out for the last three weeks just on this one verse. But it says Jesus is, we're talking about Jesus, he is the head 
the life source, the leader of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he may occupy, he himself will occupy the first place. He will stand supreme and be preeminent in everything. It's about the preeminence of Christ. I love that word, that Jesus is preeminent. He's first. Nothing else comes before him. Like from all things are made for him and by him and through him. So we put everything goes through his lens. We, he is the preeminent one. And this is the position God wants to hold in our hearts. Even in seasons of delay. It is not for us to go and make our own idols, build our own lives, build our own narratives of God. God is inviting you, even when you're waiting, even when you can't see, even when you can't figure it out. God, I'm going to let you form me. And then whatever you form me into, I will form the same thoughts that you have, the same heart that you have. Amen? Amen. Amen. I believe God's going to do it. Don't form your own idols, your own paradigm, your own narrative. Even when God is taking too long, trust and believe that God is always working behind the scenes. Come on, tell yourself that. God is always working behind the scenes in my life. Hallelujah. So we're just going to take a time to pray. If you could just stand with me. Yeah, yeah, Lauren, Lauren, you always own it. Let's just have a time where we just kind of reflect on what we heard. We don't want to be too quick to move from this space. Let's just hear what God is speaking to our own hearts. This God is speaking to me so much about my past, about the ways that I've handled things in the past, and having me just own up to that and be like, yeah, I did that wrong. So this is a, this is a prayer. This is a time for us. It's a time for us to sit and reflect, to repent, which means just to change our mind and start thinking a whole nother way, for us not to be like Aaron, who just does these crazy things and like, I don't know, I just made excuses about it. Maybe this is our time to repent. God, I'm sorry for the times that I have formed my own life. I formed my own idols. I formed my own way of doing things, my own way of thinking. God, I'm sorry. Or maybe this is a time where you just feel like, God, I wanna put you back in your right place. Jesus, I want you to be preeminent in my life. I want you to have first place. I don't even know what that looks like right now, but I want it. I want to run everything through you. I want you to be the first, the last, the in-between. And then some of us, we have a, we're praying for strength just to wait. God, I'm in a season of delay. I'm confused. I don't know what's going on with my life plan. I had it figured out, pandemic hit. I don't know what to do now. God, I'm in this season of delay where everything is stopped. And before I go out doing my own thing, I just want you to give me the strength to wait on you. Give me the strength to trust you. Give me the strength not to form my own life and my own narratives. But God, help me to see you for who you are. Help me to know, God, that you are working behind the scenes. Just like that play where everybody's running around in the back. Just like that restaurant where everybody's running around in the kitchen. This is what you're doing in the background of my life. You are busy. You are working. You are, so I don't have to do it. I don't have to be busy because you're busy for me. So, Lord, we trust you with it. So, as we sit in those three things, I'm going to invite you, even if you're here in the room, and if you feel comfortable, we'll have a a time of just some worship. Um, Lauren's going to sing this wonderful song. You can feel free to come to the altar if you want, if you want to pray, if you want to have someone uh, pray with you. The altar is open, but let's just have a time of worship. Even in this time, God, we just want to have a time where we just repent, And we say, God, we are sorry. God, we are sorry for the times that we have made you last, that we didn't put you first. Sorry for the times that we've done our own thing. God, we've 
we've uh, left you out of the equation. Sorry for making idols. Sorry, God, for doing the things that weren't of you, God, for the times that we made our own golden calves, for the times we wasted our resources and our monies on foolishness, God. We say that we're sorry. But God, even in this moment, we're saying we are turning around towards you. God, will you bless us, oh God? We want you back in your rightful place. We give you all glory. You are the preeminent one. Come on. Say, God, you are preeminent. Come on, say it to Jesus. Jesus, you are preeminent. You are first place. God, we want you to be first place in our lives, in our hearts. And God, give us the strength to wait on you. Come on, lift your hands if you need strength to wait. 